Hey there, if you have been intrigued by Oracle cards, you like the idea of cards being read, or they're just something you've kind of looked at from a distance, something you deal with regularly, um, you probably identified them as being sort of a woo tool or something that's super woo. And, and if you're not familiar, let me get a pack of cards. If you're not familiar with Oracle cards, they typically come in a box like this. Um, this is the Sacred Traveler deck by Denise Lynn. This is what her cards look like, but you know, cards can look really um, so many different designs out there depending on who produces the deck, etc. And there was something I was just sharing with my community that I thought would be really helpful because I get these questions all the time. Having been raised um, Catholic, Christian, religion, and also having a lot of clients that are very um, still very deeply inside their own religious communities, questioning whether these align, you know, with certain religious ideas, or even like if you don't believe in the, um, the metaphysical aspect of Oracle cards, is there value in them? And the answer is yes. And I say that, you know, with my background in psychology, this is, you know, if you take the metaphysics off the table, if you take the woo off the table, the reason Oracle cards are just such a good tool to use um, is because they help your brain start to strategize and, and think in different ways. So anything that gets your brain flowing blood, flowing pathways in a different direction, in a new direction, is going to start to change your life. That's just how it is. Because what happens, hey, Donna, what happens when you are... Um, living your life and kind of having Groundhog Day where like you think you've dealt with something and the, the challenge keeps coming up again and again is actually that your brain is still running a program that's getting you the exact same results. So if you want to get out of, you know, existing program and get new results, you need to get your brain to start processing things a different way. So I'm going to show you how this works. So I want you to think of a challenge that you're having it could be simple it could be like i don't know how to get from here to there right now because there's a road closed or <clears throat> i want something and i'm not sure how i can get it right so just think about a challenge that you may have and here is now a card and so take the woo off the table when you look at the card here's what started happening to your brain right away your brain is looking to see how this image applies to your challenge. And now it's taking the word transformation and applying it to your challenge. And then at the third level, it's now taking some more detail. And so it takes visually what it sees and processes it. Then it takes high level information and then lower level information. So whatever challenge you were just talking about, your brain has already started processing that challenge differently because now it has a new piece of information. So what that does is, especially when we have challenges, our amygdala back here or down here, in here, <laughs> our lower brain starts to pull all the blood towards it, right? And it's keeping you in fight, flight, freeze mode, right? It's keeping you in trauma response, no matter what the challenge is. Because that's how it is. It's like, oh my God, we've got to figure out something. And so it's trying to do everything from this lower brain capacity where all the big ideas come from your prefrontal cortex. And really what you want is for the blood flow to get out of here and to start coming back up here. Once your brain flow starts coming up here, your blood flow starts coming up here, you will have new ideas. You can also help it along by just pressing on your brain. I know that sounds super crazy, but this actually tells your body where to send the blood, right? Even think about it. Like, think about that challenge you had. And if you figure, like, the answer was, like, in here, if you start to push up here, all of a sudden, things are going to start to look differently. That's pure brain science, right? So when you use these oracle cards to try and solve problems, what happens is it forces your brain to start running ideas through different pathways. 
So let's say it's a, you know, I've got kids in school. So I've got a kid who hates to do his homework, right? And so the minute he starts, you know, I get the email from the teacher, he's behind. <laughs> My brain just starts running its normal pathway. Ugh, now I'm going to have to take away his electronics, right? So it's running its same pathway. But then I take this card and I look at it and I hear transformation, a fresh new way of living emerges all of a sudden, my brain is thinking, "Okay, where, where can, and where can we get transformation in this situation? Where, how can we have a new way? What's the new way, right?" And just those questions get your brain to start processing things in a different place and with a different pathway. And the way you get out of stuck patterns is um, your stuck patterns are because of deeper grooves in your brain, and you can't do anything to make those grooves thinner other than to stop running um, programming through them. And the way you do that is to start running programming through a different way. And the more you run it through a different pathway, the deeper this groove becomes, and that's how you get unstuck from a brain science perspective. Now, I love reading Oracle cards for my community. And if you want to see what an Oracle card reading looks like, if you want to see what today's looked like, it's in our Space for Magic group. You are welcome to join us. Let me see if I have um, the address to our Facebook group. Here it is. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash space for magic. I just did an Oracle card reading this morning about how to create space for magic, how to be luckier. And so whether you believe in the whoop side of it or not, I do. Um, I also um, only believe in the woo stuff that I have um, actual data to support. Now, sometimes that data comes from brain science. Um, and sometimes that data comes from the real world, and sometimes that data just comes from working for, with significant amounts of clients and seeing patterns develop. But nothing I share, I will ever share from just some woo, big idea popped into my head, let me see if it's true. I'm always testing what I'm putting forth. So you can trust me that if I'm sharing something, it probably has a basis in woo, but I can also back it up with science. So um, if that sounds fun to you, definitely join us in the Facebook group um, and you can catch that uh, Oracle card reading. There was some really interesting advice given this morning. And I know one person has already had a big shift in their life because of it. So if you're looking for a shift, go check it out. And hey, if you have any questions, drop them below. Um, I'm happy to share any answers I have with you. Uh, Nicoletta, I'm so glad that that um, was an explanation that made sense to you. All right. Have a great day, everyone.